We're already halfway through the week, and still the big talking point right now is that post-race altercation that we had between Kyle Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and their crews, and Ricky Stenhouse Sr. So today we're doing a follow-up on that fight as we've had fines and penalties, suspensions handed out to the number 47 team. Plus, let's hear what Richard Childress said and how Ricky Stenhouse Jr. responded on this week's edition of The Weekly Rundown. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Plus, give me your thoughts on this video. Do you think the fines that were handed down to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. fair? How about the suspensions? Let me know in the comments. Also, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. So the big talking point all week so far has been that post-race fight between Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Kyle Busch. Ridiculous! Hello, how are you? Let's start with this. We're going to go to the comments made by Richard Childress yesterday as I'm recording this on Wednesday night. He made comments on Tuesday at a charity event about Ricky Stenhouse Jr. potentially intentionally wrecking Kyle Busch in the Coca-Cola 600. Listen to this clip. Yeah, I mean, I would have jumped right in the middle of it. Uh, and right. Well, how to start fighting. <laughs> I don't fight as fair as I used to. I'm a little older, but Ricky Stenhouse said that he was going to wreck the eight car at Charlotte. Well, when I see him, I'm going to tell him if he does, I'm older, but I've just changed my style of fight. He'll carry a rough speed. Definitely some very strong words from Richard Childress, a man who really loves his race team and his drivers. If you think about it, if you remember, he did this same thing to Kyle Busch all those years ago. That's where the hold my watch saying comes from. A lot of people were talking on social media about Richard Childress's comments, and one of the things that did get brought up, will Stenhouse respond to these comments in some sort of way? Well, in an interview with NASCAR Race Hub, NASCAR on Fox, he also said a very similar thing on Sirius XM Radio. He said he had a conversation with Richard Childress about him saying he will wreck Kyle Busch at Charlotte. He said he chatted it out with RC, Richard Childress, and everything is fine between them, but Richard Childress pretty much ended the conversation with, do whatever you want with Kyle, just do not wreck my race car. Overall, I figured that's how that conversation would go if Ricky Stenhouse reached out. It's a good thing he reached out. I think he's really smart for doing that because Richard Childress don't play. I'm going to be honest, I have not taken a listen to the Sirius XM radio interview, but I did listen to the NASCAR Race Hub interview at length. We're going to track back to that interview later on in the discussion, but let's get to the penalties and suspensions. Let's start with the suspensions. We have three suspensions, including two crew members from the number 47 team and Ricky Stenhouse Sr., Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s father. Ricky Stenhouse Sr. has been suspended indefinitely. I 120% agree with this. NASCAR does not like it when crews get involved in driver disputes, especially non-crew members. That's even worse on NASCAR standards, especially if families getting involved, that's never a good thing. From my vantage point, it looked like Stenhouse Sr. almost attacked Kyle Busch, jumping on him. I know some people look at it as him separating the fight, but he jumped on Kyle Busch, he sneaked in a hit, grabbed him by the collar, and that's when Kyle Busch decided to punch him around four or five times in the face. Ooh! You like that, old man? You want a piece of me? Then we had two crew members from JTG, Clint Myrick and Keith Matthews. I do not know who these individuals are. I'm going to assume they are the two individuals pulling Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Sr. apart. I would love to get some other angles when it comes to this, but it looks like they kind of put Kyle Busch in a headlock, at least one of the two. And then the other one's trying to fight on the deck lid of the hauler. 
like I said, I would like to get some better views of the action with these two, but they both also got suspended, one for four races and one for eight. Then we're on to the big talking point, the thing that everybody's talking about. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets fined $75,000 for his punch on Kyle Busch. I've said this to a couple people and they just look at me weird or act a little weird when I say it, but I feel indifferent about this penalty. It's a weird feeling. I think it's justice, but it's not justice at the same time. Because honestly, if this were up to me, I would not fine Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I don't think drivers should be fined or suspended for fighting unless it's an extreme scenario. It'd be different if Kyle Busch was just walking on pit lane and Stenhouse Jr. came behind and punched him in the back of the head as hard as he could. Like something crazy like that, something just insane, way out of pocket. I wouldn't have fined Stenhouse $75,000, but at the same time, we're always talking about how NASCAR needs to be more consistent with their calls, with their penalties, with everything. We're always harping about them being consistent. And in this call, they're finally being consistent. And we're all kind of getting on them about the call, how we don't think Stenhouse should be fined for throwing one punch. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But I'll take you back to last year. Last year, we had two major fighting incidents, I would say, unless I'm forgetting some. There, there was Chastain and Gregson, where Chastain threw a punch on Gregson, immediately got broken up. And then at Talladega later in the year in the truck series, we had Matt Crafton and Nick Sanchez. Honestly, we still don't know the exact details of that fight because it wasn't caught on camera and there's been different people saying different things on what happened with that exact fight. But for the most part, I've heard most people describe that fight as something very similar to what happened with Stenhouse and Kyle Busch, that they were having a conversation, maybe a heated conversation, and Crafton punched Sanchez in the face and started the fight. I bring up these two fights because this was the example that NASCAR made last year. They looked at Crafton's punch on Sanchez a lot different than the punch on Chastain. The way NASCAR looks at it when it comes to Chastain punching Gregson, it was a heat of the moment sort of thing. These drivers were fresh out of their cars. They were angry. They had no time to cool down, and they fought. The way they looked at Matt Crafton punching Nick Sanchez, Crafton got wrecked out earlier on in the race, was sitting in the infield for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, similar time to what Stenhouse was. Then after the race, Crafton went to go find Sanchez, and they looked at that as being malicious, essentially. not. They had plenty of time to cool down, and they went out there and punched somebody when we don't want fighting. We can understand somebody being really emotional, but we do not like fighting. And that's kind of the gist I've gotten from NASCAR when it came to that event, that Crafton got fined because he waited around and was thinking about it and planning on how he's going to do this or this or that. And then you had Chastain punch Gregson because they got into a heated argument right after the finish of the race. Matt Crafton got fined $25,000 for hitting Nick Sanchez. So with NASCAR doing that with Crafton, fining him for that incident, they kind of put themselves in a box when it comes to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. If they penalize him, we have all these people complaining about how they're using this fight for promotion. And I'm going to get some more about that in a little bit. But they're going to get into how NASCAR is making this fight a big promotion. But if they go the other way on it, everybody's going to be like, hey, you all find Matt Crafton. And you're not finding Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You're not being consistent. It's kind of a lose-lose scenario for NASCAR. Like I said, they put themselves in a box last year with Crafton. The huge difference between these two fights is that was there was no cameras in Matt Crafton's face when he hit Nick Sanchez. So like I said, I'm very indifferent on this. I'm very on the fence about this. If it were up to me, he wouldn't have gotten fined. But at the same time, I want NASCAR to be consistent. And they made this call last year on Matt Crafton for $25,000. I would possibly agree $75,000 might be a little too steep. I'm thinking more like $50,000 would be more fair. But at the same time, I understand why they made the call because they want to be consistent with their penalties with their calls they're only doing what we said for them to do 
And before I get to my final thoughts and finish up this video, I want to get back to that interview I was talking about earlier on in the video. I will put a link for the NASCAR on Fox, the NASCAR Race Hub interview with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. It's around eight minutes long. When asked about the fines that were served to the number 47 team, including his fine, he said that he was a little bit confused about the penalties and why they happened. And overall, he left it pretty blank and said, he said he's not too concentrated on talking about the fine and this and that because he's letting everybody else on social media do it for him as this is a very big talking point right now in social media. And I would say most people are on the side of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. not getting fined and these penalties maybe being less severe. And when asked about the promotion going hand in hand with this fine essentially, he thinks the promotion of the fight and then getting a fine for the fight is a very huge contradiction. He's not too happy about it, but at the same time, it seems like he understands because this has been a history point in NASCAR. You can look back to the 1979 Daytona 500, probably the most famous moment in our sport when they're fighting in the infield. They, they got fines for that fight. Same thing with Kenseth and Logano a couple years ago. At Martinsville. I remember hearing Stenhouse mention that in the interview. Kenseth got suspended for that, and they still show that show that highlight all the time, especially when they go to Martinsville. And then he was also asked if he talked to Kyle Bush, and he said that he has not talked to Kyle Bush and he does not plan to talk to Kyle Bush unless Kyle Bush wants to talk to him first. Whatever. He said he's not gonna wreck Kyle Bush at Charlotte. He said that in the interviews, he said that to Richard Childress. And I believe that he believes that. We'll have to see when we get to Charlotte. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of payback from either side, whether that's Rowdy or Ricky, getting some sort of payback on the other. They had fireworks going off in the background of that fight, and they're going to need more fireworks for the Coca-Cola 600. I think this could be potentially the best race of the year, and we've had a lot of great races this year already. I'm very excited. For the coca-cola 600 on sunday just to encapsulate my final thoughts here i'm going to try to keep it short and sweet overall when it comes to ricky stenhouse jr's fine i'm not happy about it but i understand why they did it they want to be consistent and i respect that that they're trying their best to be consistent with these calls and penalties i'm all for the suspensions for both crew members even though i would like a better view at the actions that happened but i believe that nascar probably asked a bunch of people on what happened and that's what they came up with so i think that's fair and i couldn't agree more with stenhouse senior getting suspended indefinitely you are mine you are mine if it were up to me he would not get back into a nascar track for the rest of the year and maybe not even in 2025 depending on his reaction and his behavior from this point forward. When it comes to Richard Childress, I've made it known on this channel multiple times. I respect Richard Childress. He might be the owner of my favorite driver. I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan of the guy, mainly because of the history he has with Kyle Busch and the fact that he keeps Austin Dillon in that car. I like Austin Dillon, but he shouldn't be in that car. That's a whole nother conversation and tangent that I can go into. You know what really grinds my gears? But I really like his comments that he made at the charity event. And those were well thought out comments. Those weren't fresh after the race. Those were his true feeling comments. And he would have definitely stuck by his word if that would happen. And it could still, it still could happen. It still could happen. Stenhouse, like I said, I think he believes that he believes that he won't wreck him. But we'll have to see when they put the helmet on. Because we see how Ryan Blaney is when he puts his helmet on. He turns into a madman. And then to finish up on Kyle Busch versus Ricky Stenhouse Jr., I, I don't think this is over. I don't necessarily think they're going to wreck each other intentionally at Charlotte, but these two drivers have history, and it's not been a very good history. They've butted heads for many years, back when it was the Bush Series and the Nationwide Series. They've always had issues, even though Stenhouse said that in his post-race interview that they always raced fine i think he forgets those two butted heads quite often whether it was just an intense battle or 
actually wrecking each other. It's happened before with these two, and I expect it to continue. These two drivers' personalities just do not gel well together, whether it's on the racetrack or off. But give me your thoughts on this video. Let me know what did you think of the fines? What did you think of Richard Childress's comments? What do you think the future is of this rivalry between Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Kyle Busch? Wanted to let you know I will have my preview out for the Coca-Cola 600 out tomorrow. I also hope to have my Indianapolis 500 preview out tomorrow as well. I am doing some Indianapolis 500 coverage this week. Very excited about Kyle Larson doing the double. I have debated on maybe doing a double video. Let me know if I should do a video about the double, about Robbie Gordon, John Andretti, Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, all these drivers doing the double at Indianapolis. But that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.